All right, guys, so we're back in the car for another video, and today we're going to be basically setting up the 340i to be a better daily driver. A lot of you know when I bought this car, I primarily bought it for like R&D and testing and making DIY videos and things like that, but especially over the past couple months, you know, it's been so cold and the weather's been crappy, so I haven't been driving the 440, and I really don't like driving my X5. I'm just not a fan of SUVs. So I've been driving this car a lot more as kind of like a happy medium. And over that time, of course, I'm starting to notice some of the deficiencies and things like that. So we're going to do all the things that I usually do within the first week or first month of buying a car to kind of personalize it, make it more comfortable, protect me as a driver, you know, all of those things just to make sure that this car is really set up for daily driver duties. So, yeah, I know a lot of you guys have been asking where the 340 is, what's going on with it. You've been looking for more vlog style videos. So hopefully, you know, this kind of fills that gap and I'll try to make more of these in the future. You know, let me know down in the comments if there's anything else that you want to see. But, uh, yeah, I just figured this would be a nice opportunity to take you guys along the ride with me. So let's go get this done. <laughs> Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, guys, so we are currently on the highway headed to do the first thing, which is get the car's windows tinted. And a lot of you guys know I like my dark cars with dark accents, so this whole fishbowl thing just isn't for me. So we're going to head to a local shop, Eclipse Window Tinting. They're the same shop that did the window tinting on my 440i, so I know they do good work. And actually last year they had a car show, kind of open house event, where people could make a post from the event and use their hashtag. And if you got the most likes, then you want a gift card to get a free window tinting service. So I made a post last year about it. I didn't really tell you guys that's what it was for. I was hoping just to win organically without rallying a bunch of people to like and share and all that stuff. And thankfully I did. So a huge shout out to everybody that has been supporting my social media channels. It helps a lot more than you guys realize sometimes. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and redeem that gift card, go and get the windows tinted on the 340. And I'm really excited to see how this looks afterwards. It should be a much needed improvement. And especially in the summer, as things are starting to get warmer, just make the car more comfortable. So unfortunately it's raining, but here's kind of how it looks right now. Everything super clear. We're not gonna go too dark, but it should look a lot better with the window tint. So here she is. Much better. All we're seeing is reflection, so that's kind of good, but much harder to see inside of the car. Alright guys, so we're back home from getting the windows tinted. Everything looks pretty good. It's 20% window tint all the way around and it's full ceramic. So it's actually the same level of tint that I got on the 440i. It's not quite as dark as I wanted it to be and that's kind of to be expected. You know, most of us want the tint to look pretty dark during the day, but also it needs to be visible at night so you can't go too dark. I do feel like this car having like more windows and bigger windows compared to the 440i makes it look lighter than the 440i like the 440i's tint looks really dark for what it is but you know it's a trade-off i'm 
definitely happy with the results and uh, it should make the car a lot more comfortable. You know, the ceramic tint does a really good job of rejecting heat, so I won't have the sun beating down on my arms in the summer and stuff like that. And also it gives you some privacy, you know, so people can't just see what's in your car all the time. So yeah, definitely happy with it. Again, a big shout out to Eclipse for hooking it up. And now we're going to start setting up my car to be protected. And I've been riding around with no protection for a while. It's really been bugging me. So I'm happy to finally get this all set up. And the first thing we're going to do is install my radar detector. I do run a unit in R3 and it's been great. I used to run an escort radar detector, switched to unit in, never looked back. It has great range. It can, you know, mute false alerts and just has really good control and features, even for somebody that's more of like an advanced user. So I've been using that for a while and definitely enjoying it. Now for the actual setup in this car, I did get a couple things that will help give me, you know, the best features and just usability. I've put this in multiple cars now and I think I've got a good idea of what I want in this kind of setup. So the first thing that we're going to do is this mirror tap. This allows you to hardwire the radar detector directly to the mirror. So there's a plug in there. That's what gives you like the compass and sets up power and everything to your mirror. And this is going to tap into that plug and then just run a little cable out that can power up your radar detector. So really clean and simple, sleek install. You don't have to tap a fuse box or run wires throughout the entire interior of the car. You can just use one of these. It has a different connector depending on the actual radar detector you're using. But other than that, um, the options are pretty simple. So we're going to put that on the mirror so that I can hardwire it. And then I am going to be using this mount. Now, this is something that was actually recommended to me by one of my subscribers. And I apologize. I cannot find our messages. I can't remember your username. I think you messaged me on Instagram and sent me a link. But this is definitely a game changer. This is a great solution because if anybody out there has a radar detector, you know those suction cups they come with aren't really that great. The little ones, even like the dual suction cup mounts, tend to come unstuck randomly. You know, it's fine for two months and then one day you come out to the car and the radar detector is like dangling by the cable or worse, you know, if you're using like a cigarette lighter, it might have literally fallen down in the car. So you don't want that to happen, of course. But even like the big single suction cups that are like really sticky, I've had one of those melt and I don't know what like material is used on the suction cup piece where, like I said, it's really sticky and tacky and gooey. But I left my car parked out in the sun one day and I came out and there was like a snail trail going down the windshield from where it had melted. So I didn't want to use that one either. So I'm really thankful that you suggested this. It's semi-permanent, so it does have 3M tape on there. It's not really meant to be like moved around a lot, but if you do need to pull it off, you can remove the tape and just put like another strip of tape on there. That's not too difficult. And it's all metal construction, so it'll be nice and sturdy. You can kind of bend it to angle it to the perfect angle for your windshield and it'll hold everything in place. So yeah, let's go ahead and get both of these installed. So to get the mirror tab installed, we actually need to remove this cover from the mirror. It's really hard and kind of intimidating. What I recommend is kind of starting under here and just using a trim tool to slowly spread this apart and then work your way all the way up the mirror around the front and up here. And then you'll be able to completely remove that cover. So now with the cover removed, you can see these plugs and we're actually going to be removing this black plug in front. I'm going to use my trim tool to kind of push it. There we go. And pull that out. So the audio here got messed up somehow, so we're going to do a voiceover, but this is how you want everything to be connected on the actual mirror tap. You can see the red is for power and we're tapping into what is usually like a brown and green wire. On my car it looks brown and gray. And then the black is the ground, which is usually brown and black in that top right corner. So once you have this set up, you're going to basically plug it into your radar detector and test it to make sure that everything powers up. On mine, shows exactly what you expect, 12.4 volts. 
So we're good to go. So now we'll just plug it back in and reinstall everything. And now this is the finished product. So I've got my mount up here. I've got the actual mirror type right here. If I don't have the radar detector, that's literally how I tuck the wire out of the way. So it's really convenient, but most times I should be driving with the radar detector. So all I have to do is click this in. Plug in my wire on this side, and then when I turn on the car, everything works as it should. So that should be nice and simple, clean install, very happy with how that all ended up. And I like having my radar detector up and out of the way, so I have it tucked really high up on the headliner so I don't have to deal with seeing it in my face or in my field of view for most driving conditions. Now the last thing going in the 340 to fully protect me is of course a Blackview dash camera. If you guys don't already know, I am a Blackview ambassador, so you guys can use the link down in the description to buy any dash cam, any product on their website, and it'll give you 10% off. But of course I want to run a Blackview dash cam in all of my cars, so this is the one that I actually chose for the 340. I bought this a couple months ago and now the DR770 is out. So I'm still going to install the DR750, get some time with it, but I'm also actually getting ready to order a DR770 and then I'll be able to do like a comparison video in the future. So for now, we're just gonna run this. It should still be a great quality dash camera for my needs. It also has the cloud connectivity integrated so I can just plug in my SIM card and get that all working. So. I've already put a full DIY on my 440 on how to install this, so I'm not going to redo that in this video. We're just going to kind of plug it in and get it going. All right, guys, so we've got everything wrapped up. I've got the radar detector installed, and I just finished installing the dash cam. This time I actually wired it up to the fuse box in the rear of the car. It was a little bit different. I don't know if I would say it was harder or easier than wiring it up to the fuse box in the front. But it was just something I felt like trying. So if you guys are interested in seeing that method in a future video, let me know and I can put something together. But it feels good to have, you know, the protection, the comfort, everything set up on this car. And now the last thing, of course, to personalize it is to put my custom plate on. A lot of you guys have been guessing what plate I have. A lot of great guesses, but here's what we landed on. So <laughs> a lot of you know I'm not a big fan of dual clutch transmissions. The ZF transmission in this car is definitely one of the better automatics that I've driven, and I think it fixes a lot of the issues that I have with the dual clutches, but this is a shot at, you know, a lot of people, the M3 guys, the Audi, Volkswagen crew, Alpha guys, basically everybody with a dual clutch. It's just, you know, obviously all in good fun, kind of friendly rivalry, but something that I felt like kind of resonated with my personal opinion and, you know, hopefully entertain other car guys on the road. So, yeah, that basically wraps it up for this car. I'm going to get back to driving it as much as possible. Hopefully get back to testing out some different parts. Doing a lot of new videos with this to help you guys see some of the things that I would do with a brand new build. I've also got some track day stuff set up in the future, so stick around for that. So, yeah, lots of new videos with this car will be coming. But yeah, for now, that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.